again. We're still doing Punnett squares in this stage, but uh, what we're into now is what are called dihybrid crosses. Di means two, and what that means in this case is that we're tracking two traits at once. And this is going to give us some really epic Punnett squares. It's fun once you get good at it and a little bit wild when you first see it. In this case, we're talking about two characteristics of pea plants. Their color, which can be yellow or green, and the seed shape, which can be either round like a ball or wrinkly. And we're going to make a Punnett square that handles both of those things at the same time. So they give us two parents. So this is like mom plant, dad plant. In our first example, they have the same genotype. And the mother plant is yellow. It has the dominant yellow allele and then a recessive green allele. The yellow wins, so the plant is yellow. It also has round seeds because round is dominant to wrinkled, and same story over here. Yellow dominating green and round dominating wrinkled. So you know that when we set up a Punnett square, and this is going to be a biggie, normally we split up the alleles because well you have two of each allele, you only get to pass on one to your kids. When there are two traits, what that means is each of these plants gets to pass on one of their Ys, could be the dominant or the recessive, and they get to pass on one of their Rs. And we have to consider every possible way that those could be arranged. So let's worry about that first. This parent plant is big Y, little y, big R, little r. How many different combinations of Y's and R's are there? Maybe hit pause if you want to think about that for a bit. There are four. And if you have a way of eyeballing this that gives the right results, go ahead. I'll show you a mathematical way to do it in a second. But for, at first, I'm just going to tell you that the four combinations are, you could get big Y and big R, both dominants you could get big Y little r, or you could get the little y with the big r, or the little y with the little r. You absolutely must have one y and one r in every combo. It's just a matter of doing all the mixtures of dominant and recessive. Now, if you've done a little bit of math, you're probably familiar with the concept that they call foiling for when you multiply stuff out. We do it when we're multiplying binomials by each other. And FOIL stands for first, outside, inside, last. And that actually works with these also. What it tells you to do is it says one combination is take the first from each of these pairs, which would be the big Y and the big R. There it is. O stands for outside, means take the ones on the outside edges of this. So take the big Y from the far left and the little R from the far right. There it is. I for inside means take the middle two, the two that are closest to the middle, little y, big R. There we go. And L is for last. It says take the last one from this pair, the lowercase y, and the last one from the second pair, which is the lowercase r. There we go. So you don't have to use foil, but if you're doing math, you might find you take pretty naturally to that. It's a good way to keep organized and make sure that you get all the combinations. So. This is all the egg cells that could come from mom. Mom can pass on any combination like this of her Y and R alleles. And because dad is genetically identical, the sperm cells are going to look the exact same way. Dad can also pass on big Y, big R, big Y, little R, little Y, big R, or little Y, little R. And now, this is going to be a bit of a slog. There are 16 different offspring that could happen here. I shouldn't say different. Some of them are going to be duplicates. But there are 16 squares that we have to get through to do this. First here, we get big Y, big Y, big R, big R. Here we get big Y, big Y, big R, little r, big Y, little y. Big R, big R. 
Big Y, little y. Big R, little r. There's nothing wrong with your audio. I'm just being quiet and writing. You can see what's happening here. This part is easy but time consuming. Big y, little y. Do you see any duplicates? The funny thing is, as far as genotype, there are only a few, but when we get to phenotype, you'll find there are a bunch. So once we have this list down, we're going to be combing through this and trying to collect these by genotype. And you'll find, you remember with our monohybrid crosses that there was a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio that we saw fairly often? There's a ratio like that with dihybrid crosses too, but it's more complicated. And spoiler alert, it's 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. I've called that. Hopefully it'll happen now. So, these are all the pea plant babies that those two can produce. What are their phenotypes? This one is yellow and round. Yellow, round. This one has a big Y, so it's yellow. I'm going to speed through these. Anything with big Y is yellow. 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 No, my cursive is too bad. I'm going to go back to printing. Yellow. 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 Oh, little Y, little Y, we finally get a green. And another green. Yellow, yellow, green, and this one is green. And now if we go through looking for shape, anything with a big R is round. So round, 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 the whole top row is round. Big R, little r is round. Little r, little r, this one is wrinkled. And we're back to round, and then we get wrinkled again. Uh, two big R's is going to be round, big time. Round, round, round. Big R makes this round. Two little R's makes that one wrinkled. Big R makes that one round. And this last little guy is wrinkled. <sighs> okay, so how many different combinations have we got? Yellow and round happens one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight yellow and round, and nine. There are nine out of the sixteen offspring that are yellow and round. I'll put nine out of sixteen. Often we just write nine, but nine sixteenths is how often that happens. What other combos have we got? Uh, yellow and wrinkled. There's one of that. Two yellow and wrinkled. And da, 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 three. Three sixteenths of the plants will be yellow but wrinkled. Uh, uh, those are all circled. Here we have green and round. There's one of those. There's two. There are three green and round. Three sixteenths, green, round. And the last one down here is green and wrinkled. One sixteenth of the time you will get green and wrinkled. This is the double recessive one, so you don't see it expressed very often. It has the lowest percent chance. So 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 is a ratio you'll hear people talk about a lot. And that happens whenever you have a maximally complicated dihybrid cross where both parents are heterozygous, which means all the combinations are possible. All right, so 
the rules you learned for Punnett squares still hold up. It's still get a legend if you don't have one already, work out the gametes you can get from mom, work out the gametes you can get from dad, put them on a Punnett square, and then work through the fill in the Punnett square and figure out phenotypes. The only difference is there's more gamete combinations now because we're working with two letters at once and filling out the chart is a bit more of a chore because there are two traits being handled at once. But the basic procedure for doing the, the Punnett has not changed all that much. I hope you see that and aren't too alarmed. And if you are feeling alarmed, not to worry, plenty of examples to come.